Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edward III and we get to hear from King Edward III today in Act 2, Scene 1. So Edward took off to fight back the Scottish army that decided they were going to advance as soon as the English army sort of fell back because there was a truce. But upon seeing the English army arrive, the Scottish people, the Scottish king and his cronies ran away. So there was no actual battle, but the English army did find the Countess of Salisbury in the castle, and she and King Edward did quite a nice bit of flirting, so much so that they started rhyming. And shortly after all of this flirty rhyming happened, uh, we saw Lodovic had seen all of this, and he was paying very close attention to who was blushing when and what that might mean and all of that. And then King Edward came in and was, in yesterday's monologue, was talking about how beautiful the Countess of Salisbury is and how silly the Scottish people were for running away when they had this beautiful prisoner and all of this. And then he sees Lodovic there and he's like, get me a pen and paper. So Lodovic goes to get ink and paper. And while he's gone, King Edward lets the audience know that Lodovic is a poet and very good with words, very good with writing. So he comes back in and King Edward is like, did you, do you have the pen and ink? And Lodovic is like, yep, I'm ready. What do, you, what do you want me to write? And King Edward says, then in the summer arbor sit by me, make it our council house or cabinet, since green our thoughts, green be the conventicle where we will ease us by disburdening them. Now, Lodovic, invocate some golden muse to bring thee hither an enchanted pen that may, for size, set down true size indeed. Talking of grief to make thee ready groan. And when thou write, writest of tears, encouch the word before and after with such sweet laments that it may raise drops in a torter's eye and make a flint heart Scythian pitiful for so much moving hath a poet's pen. Then if thou be a poet, move thou so and be enriched by thy sovereign love. For if the touch of sweet concordant strings could force attendance in the ears of hell, how much more shall the strains of poet's wit beguiled and ravish soft and human minds. So basically what he's saying here is, if poetry be the food of love, play on. <laughs> um, he's like, you know, come, come and sit by me. We're gonna focus, we're gonna write some stuff because poetry and words are the way to move people. And he, what he needs right now is to be able to move someone. And it's, it is a little bit interesting, I think. It, it, to me, this is, this is kind of beautiful speech. It's not maybe as heightened as some Shakespearean text is, but it is heightened. I mean, in couch, in couch grief with other words that may raise drops in a tortor's eye and make a flint heart city and pitiful. I mean, that, that's not, it's poetic. It's poetic, we'll just say that. So anyway, he says to Lodovic, he's like, you're the poet, write this stuff down, be, be inspired by my love and your love for me, be inspired and write some beautiful poetry. And Lodovic is like, um, who am I writing to? And the response to that will be tomorrow's monologue. So I'll see you then. Mwah.